Love Talk Radio. <laughs> the following is intended only for mature audience. <laughs> Because they were looking 
for the half black girl, and that was me. <laughs> there you go. Think about it. Think about it, because she is like half Mexican and half Caucasian. I'm half black and yeah. half Mexican. You're half Caucasian you, you, and half yeah. Asian. Duh. You could you could be you couldn't be a complete you could be a complete right you know yeah. <laughs> they got in trouble you know because you know the you know the yellow ranger used to be Asian so they got in trouble and, and the black ranger was black so they had to do something else that's right <laughs> they just switched right <laughs> <laughs> right right well you damn you to that's not that's not why we all love the show. It never made sense. It, we loved it because it was just so cute and cuddly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so wait, Johnny, you said you had the same experience as Karen. But how did you find out about the audition, and did you know what the show was? Because she had no clue. Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I was familiar with the show. I, I, I was studying uh, Shaolin Kung Fu in uh, Texas, and... Uh, my instructor looked at the paper and they were, he saw this article and he called me over and showed it to me and it was an article that said they're looking for new rangers. And uh, I had seen like a little bit of the show just in passing. I didn't know much about it, uh, but I knew that it was a TV show for kids and they were doing martial arts. And uh, occasionally I would catch it and see it and go and think to, my, to myself that I could do that stuff. Um, but I... I I wasn't, like, into the show. Like, I wasn't familiar with all the characters or anything, uh, but I knew of the show. Um, right. So, yeah, I just went to an audition, and, you know, that was my first Voila. audition. I, I hadn't done anything other than that, actually, before then. I was working right. at Subway, so. Were <laughs> you really? I never knew yeah, that. That's no, funny. I was. I was a sandwich artist. That's what I talked about in the Subway and the Power Rangers. Oh, Joe's going to be so mad. Him and Joe could have bonded over Subway at more Exactly. Damn it. Oh, next uh, time, next more two years, we can make that happen. That's too bad. So, obviously, your life has been a whirlwind since. How do you feel, like, I know what the show has brought to my life and how it kind of has done certain things, good and bad, for my career, mostly good. What do you feel like, how do you feel this show, how did it help you as far as your career now? Um, you know, I, okay, well, the, the way I look at it is like, uh, it was great when I was on the show, and right. uh, right after the show, like when we were done, you know, it, it was really hard to get a job for me, you know, uh, I right. first off, at the time, there were there were really no roles for like a half Asian, you know, and all I did was on camera, <laughs> obviously, from Power Rangers, and so right. I struggled, I struggled, I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't get an Asian role because I wasn't, you know, Asian enough, you know, and so right. it was just so hard for me, and I just kind of, so I had a couple years of just this terrible time trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life, you know, um, but at the time, on the show, when things were going, it was great, I had a wonderful time, and then it wasn't until, you know, I started getting into voiceover and, and then turning towards music that, you know, I found another path for me, you know. Wow. So, okay, so how but, but when into voiceover? Because that's retro like, now. right? Like it's like such a a different lane. Like getting into voiceover. How did you do that? No, it was you know, I mean, it was again, it was just kind of a weird fluke. Like I did, you know, Koichi. I was working. I worked. Yes. With, they they were doing like this independent film, and they they had me uh, play the lead in it, and uh, it was just you know all action stuff. Uh, but the, they were Japanese guys, and. Uh, the camera they were using was Japanese. Uh, the sound guys weren't, and so they could they didn't exactly get the audio out correctly. And so I had to go back and redub, uh, or I had to dub the entire movie. And when I was doing wow. that, the producer, he heard my voice, and he asked me to come in and audition for this anime show, and uh, I got the part on Trigun from there, and it just rolled into that. So basically, if those sound guys didn't, like, screw up the audio, then I would never be doing any of the voiceover that I'm doing. Wow, let's see. Yeah, like every, my entire do. life is a pure, it's just accident after another. It's like one after another. I stumble into right. something great. It's like I, I, I've, That's true, though. I, I don't purposely go, this is what I'm going to do. I just, uh, I have no choice. You know, and that's, I just get into it by accident. I know, and you know what, that's funny that you say it that way, because I remember us hanging out, and I remember you going, I think I'm going to teach myself how to play the guitar. And then the next thing you yeah. know, you're like in a band. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? 
Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. you're like, telling me easy, easy. you just taught yourself one day and then got in a band? Kind of, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, like I... Yeah, I just, tell the story. Well, I mean, it's, it's a long story, but, but no, I mean... Uh, we got time. I, uh... We got an hour. Uh, but anyway, right. like, I, 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 a friend of mine, I, I, like, after I moved to Power Rangers, like, doing to Cal- to Texas, California, you know, it was a big move, and I was on my own, um, aside from knowing Karen, who was, like, across the uh, apartment street, um, and uh, which was great, by the way, because there was a time where I didn't eat for three days, and she had food I could, like, go and eat at her place. But anyways. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> I was like, why did you eat for three days? Like, you'd be eating at work, and then didn't, I was like... It was, okay, we'll no, get back to that. Because, uh, <laughs> because we didn't get paid. We didn't get paid forever, right. you know? Right. And, uh, yeah, I was starving. So, anyways, but, but yeah, okay. Like, shit, I let me tell uh, you. <laughs> but a friend of mine played the guitar. Yeah, I, I, like, I left for Power Rangers, and I came back after a year to visit, and he was, like, amazing on the guitar. And I was like, oh, cool, the guitar, you know, I want to learn. And so I bought a guitar, and I, I kept thinking that I was going to learn it, you know, and, and I never really got totally into it until, like, after, like, Power Rangers, you know, and I, I had nothing. I literally had nothing. Like, everything was gone, and all I had was this busted cot and two trash bags and a guitar, and I was, like, living from home wow. to home with friends, you know, and I, I, my acting career was basically gone. It was, like, nothing. I, like I said, I spent a couple of years just trying to get into it, but there's nothing for me, and I had this guitar, and I, I it was like, okay, well, I guess this is what I'm going to be doing, because I have nothing else. I better do something with it, and so I taught myself wow. to play the guitar, and then, uh, you wow. know, well, I guess the and long now you make a living. I formed the band. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that, but that's the, the, you know, and I want people to know this because they think like we were on this show, and they think you guys are superheroes, and they don't realize like he's right. Like we got on the show, and they moved us out there, and they kind of gave us like a little lump sum of money to kind of move out there, and then they didn't pay us for like ever, for, like a month, and so we had to make this money like stretch and eat. Like we're like straight out of like school. Like we didn't know what to do. And How is that even legal? It wasn't. <laughs> it probably wasn't. <laughs> uh, I know it wasn't. Like, it's so bad. And then, like, hearing Johnny, you know, after you get off the show, you go through stretches where you literally have nothing. Like, we didn't leave with a million dollars in our pocket. You know, Kaban had the million dollars in his pocket. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy time. That's enough. Enough. Yeah. I hope yeah. one of you at least wrote a strongly worded letter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, we'll we'll get on that. <laughs> Don't worry, I got this, I got this. I'll call him up tomorrow. I'll let him know. <laughs> I know, I know. I'll post so, on his Facebook. <laughs> so, so why do people suggest him to me as a friend? I don't want to be friends with him. <laughs> I know. I get that too, and I'm like, are you serious? Uh, <laughs> I know. I hate to break it to you guys. It was the show was great. The fans are great. The owners not so much. Okay. <laughs> so we know Johnny and Karen that you guys did not get paid on the show, but Johnny, <laughs> you did something Karen didn't, and you did go back, right? And you like almost what? died or something because you were trying to morph, or I don't, I can't really remember. But did they pay you when you went back the second time at least? Oh, when I went back uh, to do like the space thing or whatever space episode, yeah, I got paid. But uh, well, uh, I did. I went back for space, and I went back for the 15th anniversary that was done in New Zealand. And uh, you know, they paid me okay. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, I, I mean, it was a little better than when I was on the show, but it was it was still the kind of the same thing, you know. But I did have a good time. I, I mean, the reason I went back is because I did ask fans if they wanted to see me there. And most of them said yes, and uh, my friend Koichi was shooting some stuff, right. and I just wanted to be a part of it, you know? That's beautiful. When you so were the only me. one really left oh. out of Karen and, and Steve, they left the show, and you, you were kind of like the last one standing. Did you feel abandoned? I mean, they sent poor Aww. Aisha over to Africa, and Steve broke his back. <laughs> <laughs> the Stone Canyon kids just got <laughs> bolted. Wait, wait they, they sent you. They sent you to Africa. They sent you to Africa. Africa. <laughs> you didn't know that? No. Okay, let no, me tell you. I, I, I had didn't a realize. meeting. No, I, I had knew. A meeting. I knew. Uh, 
You, like, Nakia's character came from Africa. I didn't know they sent you to Africa. No, they did. Did they send Steve they to did. Mexico? Oh. <laughs> Probably. But, you know, we had a meeting, and they promised me ten episodes, and then the next time I went to set, that was my last day. And I was going yeah. to Africa. It was pretty brutal. Um, but on a brighter note, like, I want, I want people to know, like, you've done major work and voiceover, and I know you've named some things, so let them know if they don't know, because I want people to know, like, all the amazing things that you've done, because you're like a, you turn your life around, you know? Like, you're a successful voiceover, you know. I've artist. been pretty fortunate, you know. I, I you know, well, Trigun was the first uh, anime voiceover I did, um, and I played Vash, and I did a, a Kanada and Akira, um, Kiba and Wolf's Train, Ichigo and Bleach, uh, Love and Vision Code Geass, you know. I, I can name a ton of things, but if people aren't familiar with anime, then they're not going to really know those. Um, right. I did, That's you know, important. I did I did do some games like uh, I did uh, what Yang uh, in Street Fighter IV, um, Zero in Marvel vs. Capcom, uh, Nero in Devil May Cry IV, uh, Bumblebee in Transformers War for Cybertron. So, so I've done a number of, of things here and there. And obviously they right. can, you know, look it up online. Did you but, do uh, yeah, I, I've been pretty fortunate. What was that? Did you do any Pokemon? I, did not do, I didn't do Pokemon. <laughs> How about Sailor Moon? Oh, God. Oh, God. That, that's so done Daisy, in New York. Daisy, <laughs> you have been so quiet over there. And I know Daisy had, like, a long list of questions. She emailed me You're earlier. You're drooling. Girl, I, you know what? I, I was more heading towards the music. I mean... I know that I had actually read that you, you did teach yourself how to play the guitar, and that's really hard to do. It's not easy, and be successful at it. So you, you've you gone out there, and you broke into the music industry. I mean, weren't you intimidated going in? Um, you know what? It was, like I said, it was one of those things where I didn't, I had nothing else, you know? So out of necessity, I, I taught myself to play. Like, I felt like, if I don't succeed at this, I'm not going to be able to do anything. I had, I had nothing, like, on the horizon for me, you know. And so I felt like if I didn't give everything I had and just really focus on this and, and really make something of it, that I was just going to, you know, I, I had no idea what I was going to do. I was going to be homeless or something, you know. Um, so oh. I kind of just had to make myself learn. And uh, not not that it instantly changed my life and I was, a, you know, a brilliant musician, but... Uh, but yeah, I, my focus changed totally, and then luckily I I, uh, I slipped into voiceover uh, by chance, and that that really kind of like helped me out financially and got me back on the path of you know at least being an actor again. Um, and then meanwhile, I was like, you know what, this music thing is really my passion. It's uh, it's more something that that I'm creating. You know, like working on the voiceover thing or working on an, a film or show or whatever. You no, know, it's great, but it's not my project usually, you know. And so the music is is really just anything from my own heart. So uh, I, there's, I obviously have more passion for it, you know. Wow. And, and it's more rewarding for me. It's like if if I go to a show and somebody's telling me, "Oh, I love the character that you did in Bleach or whatever. I loved it." And I'm like, "Oh, that's great," and I am honored that they like it. But that's I can only, I mean, there's the, there's other creators that created the show, you know. When somebody I'm at a show and somebody's singing my songs. Then that really hits me right in the heart because then I'm like, you know, I really made a connection with that person. Whereas the voiceover thing, yeah, it, it kind of is partially my thing, but a lot of it has to do with those guys that are making it wherever they are, you know. Right, right. Absolutely. No, and wow. and your your that passion you can tell from your music and from Eyeshine, um, you bring that in, and your your current record it's a little bit heavier than the past one. Is that something that you kind of just poured into? You know what made you have that heavier sound? Um, you know, it was uh, there's a number of I love things. It. You know, and if you, if you listen to like our very first album all the way to our latest album, it's a uh, it's kind of a little bit to do with the just kind of finding our own voice. Um, but part of it is like you know we did the album Tone of Echoes and, and it was a really good album for us. And uh, but a lot of people said that it was it was mellow or something. It was too mellow. And so, you know, I was like, okay, fine, I'll make something a little harder and I'll scream a little bit, you know. Um, and, and, I, and I also wanted to have something, like in L.A., there's, 
there's so many bands that, I mean, all they do is scream, you know, first yeah. chorus, three chorus, bridge. It's all just screaming, you know, and you can't, you really don't understand half of it, you know. And so I wanted to be able to play a show with people like that, you know, and have at least an edgier sound, but as well, like have melodies as well, you know what I mean? Um, right. So I just wanted right. to be able to, to cross that, I guess, boundary of genres, you know. I, I don't want to be stuck in just this one kind of, oh, you guys are pop punk. You know, I want to be able to cross that bridge, at least. Right. So, yeah. you know what? The guys are all on, and we won't keep the audience waiting, but let me introduce the fellows of iShine. Guys, introduce yourself and tell everyone, you know, what role you play in the band. For those who don't know, everyone knows, but for those who don't know, please introduce yourself. iShine. What's <laughs> up? What's <laughs> up? Who's that? Uh, this, this is, is uh... This is Maurice. What's up, Karen? <laughs> uh, Maurice is like my honey buddy. I love me some Maurice. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I'm Maurice. I play drums and try awesome. to sing sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is there? Hello. Hi. No, and what Polo. do you play? Yeah, this is Polo. What do you play, Polo? Polo. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the quiet one. Okay, who else is there? <laughs> is Jenny there? I don't think Jenny's on, actually, is she? Oh, okay. Or, okay, no. we're, we got, we got no. three of the four. We got three of the four. That's so right. this is the thing. I have seen you guys. Well, I knew when you and Maurice became friends and you told me you were, you know, thinking of doing a band, and I've kind of seen it grow. And, I mean, I have to really admit, you guys are amazing, like, I, I've never met anyone who said they're going to teach themselves how to play a guitar. The next thing you know, they're playing. And then the next thing you know, they have a band. And that they're, like, putting out an album. Like, it blew me away to see this kind of just manifest. But the group itself has kind of changed throughout the years. Like, we recently had, you know, we used to have uh, another co-host, and we kind of had a little divorce recently. <laughs> and I noticed that you guys have changed the face of I Shine. How has that affected the group? And do you want to even talk about that kind of situation? Yeah, I mean, we could talk about that. It's uh, okay. You know, I mean, it, it's it's really just all a part of uh, you know, being in an unsigned band, uh, being in any mm-hmm. band, really. Uh, you know, it's like uh, you, you struggle just to make ends meet. You know, as financially, there, there's obviously not going to be money there a lot of the times in an unsigned band, right? Because you don't have the support of a label or anything like that. Um, that kind of gets you out there. And so, you know, the guys have come and gone, you know. Um, they've stuck around. A lot of them stuck around for, you know, a couple of years, most of them three to, you know, almost four years before moving on. Right. Um, but it, I think it, is always, it always came down to just the hardships of, uh, of money, you know, and not, not being able right. to make enough within the band to uh, sustain the livelihood, you know. Right. I feel you. Yeah. So is that yeah, the I'm ultimate homeless. goal? What was that? I'm homeless, so it doesn't matter if I can just keep saying. So this is the thing, like, you guys, didn't you two form the band, or how did I shine come together? I know that, you know, it's kind of a long story, but we can have the oh, short boy. version. Yeah, yeah well, I, I can start off. I, I, uh, I, um, like I said, I, like, decided to teach myself the guitar, and uh, I started to play, and, uh, and I had, like, after Power Rangers, again, it was like a couple years I just kind of went through this depression where I was just like, man, what am I going to do, you know? I, I'm out here, and, like, I, I had a lot of issues of, like, you know, how can I go back home, you know, at, at now? You know, I, I'm going to be a complete failure, you know? And so I was dealing with all this stuff and uh, as I was teaching myself to play the guitar. Um, and as I was, like, singing and just making up songs... It, it really kind of, like, brought me out of that, you know, and I was able to, like, right. create something, you know, and um, and I, I, in the back of my head, I just thought, you know, if I can form a band and we can create music that would uh, kind of motivate people and move people, you know, to to kind of do the same or get through the same stuff that I got through, then then I would feel like I'm I'm giving back in some way, you know, and so I decided, right. hey, I'm going to just try to form a band. And uh, so I, I, all I did was just start going around to the different places and people that I knew. And at the time, I was going to a church with uh, a bunch of friends, and I had had them join the band. People laughed at my face. People told me I shouldn't do it and that I should give up and that I could never be a rock star. 
Um, and then uh, and then Maurice came along. I was like, hey, you know, because the guys were leaving because they couldn't do it. And so I, I forced I forced Maurice basically to buy drums from my old drummer, and and he did, and uh, and he just started. You know, Maurice kind of was following me around because we'd shoot a lot of videos and stuff like that. Um, and then yeah, we we just kind of formed in a band and and just kept going from there really. Right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So, after all of I know that you went through this. I mean, it's, it's obvious that you guys honed your craft. Is the ultimate goal to get signed, or is it to stay independent and kind of do, you know, keep continue to do your own music? Well, um, <laughs> it'd be great. <laughs> I mean, it, it, <laughs> if, if some label had an awesome deal, obviously we'd take it. But, uh, right. I mean, we, we've turned down development deals, and basically people giving us contracts, which they just take 15% of what we're doing, which is retarded. Right. Um, but, yeah, I guess the goal would be to get our name out I mean, there as much as You possible. could say, like, our dream has always been to get signed, right? You know, I mean, that is, that is the dream if you're a band. And, uh right. And, and, you know, and it was our dream for the longest time, and, and it's not that it's not our dream anymore, but it's like, the way the industry is now, it's, it's so far mm-hmm. you No, know, and it's just not, it's not something that looks like would even happen, you know, and you really right. have to be a success on your own. You have to be able, you have to make millions on your own for them to kind of really consider you Pick or you think up. that you're worth yeah. anything. Yeah. You know, and right, so, it's crazy because the industry has changed to the point where you're almost better off on your own. Like you could probably yeah. make more money. Absolutely. You know, we've known people that take, that took deals like, for ten thousand dollars, and it's like a four album deal, and it's like you're never gonna get any money back, you know, because they right. own it all. You know, they own yeah. everything, merchandise and all that stuff, you know. And ten thousand. You know, so yeah, mine, you know, it's pretty two. ridiculous. Yeah, and that's it and that's a serious. and that's a band of like four or five members, so they're not making any money, you know, for years, and so it's just kind of ridiculous. And and like Marie said, we we had development deals, but but again, it was like. We we got those offers like around the time we were about to release our Tone of Echoes album and uh, my Paper Kingdom album, and both times they had told us to hold off on those releases, don't release those songs yet because we want to be able to prove the songs or whatever. And we were like, what? You're gonna like <laughs> step in? We don't even know you guys. And you're gonna start telling us how and what we should play. You know, they're telling us we don't look right or whatever. And it's like this doesn't make any sense. You know, it's not about the music anymore. And so right. it didn't feel right, and so we just went ahead and we were like, no thanks, you know. Um, so at, at right. this point, it's, like Marie said, it's not that we wouldn't turn it down. It's just it's just got to be an offer that, that makes sense. Right. Makes sense to me. At least you guys are savvy. Um, I Okay, I know, like, tons and tons of fans, have hit, they've hit us up. I've got to ask the question, who's single? I know your situations, but they don't. Who's single? Oh. Who's not? Now we're talking. <laughs> Polo, Polo is single. Polo is single. Polo. Okay. Polo is single. Polo is single. Single and, and ready to mingle. Ready to mingle. Well, wait, wait, wait. He's, he's got to get his visa first. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to get his visa first. I know some girls who yeah. marry him. Yeah, he's, he's, looking, he's, looking, he's looking for a wife. <laughs> a wife so he can stay we'll in America. Him for a green card. Right. Do you like do blondes you like with big breasts? Yeah, do you like blondes and big breasts? It used to be former child stars on uh, all that. <laughs> and like their ass sign. Because <laughs> we got one of those on the show. <laughs> you may Japanese. have to put on spandex. Right. <laughs> and fruit roll up. Okay. Right, exactly. You may have to put on spandex and fruit roll-ups, but that's a whole other show. Um, okay, so if Polo is single, ready to mingle, that means you two are? Hey, you're not. Not, not. Not single? Not single. You are you're not single. And Maurice, you are not single, not mingling. Not okay. single. <laughs> okay, but if okay, would you single. still sign a bitch's ass? That's what we need to know. <laughs> would you sign a girl's ass? Um, well, are you talking like bare butt? Cause, <laughs> I yeah. Well, let's say she had on some panties, but her cheek was hanging out. Uh, that's weird. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it may or may not have happened not at Morphicon.
you just, you know, you, you weren't here. And it just made me think maybe there was something in the past between you and Karen that was a little awkward. So I have insisted that um, maybe y'all have knocked boots, and she just don't want to tell us <laughs> that there was a little <laughs> loving going on behind the scenes with those no, uh, morphers. No knocking of no boots. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all were knocking power coins? <laughs> no, it's quarters. It's quarters. <laughs> if she's got quarters, we've got bigger problems than I thought with the oh, show. Oh man, yeah, we do. Oh God, that yeah, no. I can I can say maybe the legitimate Blake Foster child, but no knocking of the boot with Johnny. Oh. Hart. That's <laughs> no, right. no, that's a joke too. That's a joke too. <laughs> Now, Karen, Karen is, like, realistically, she was more like my sister, you know, the entire yeah. time. She was always there for me, and for some reason, I always needed help because I was stupid. Um, and she, <laughs> you know, and she had, like, I mean, she, Tim Grace was her manager, and he was just awesome yeah. and would, was always there to help out, you know, and, and uh, that, you know, that kind of helped, too, because, like, I was there by myself, you know, and, and it seemed like she always kind of, she kind of, knew more even about just the industry in itself, you know, and I was just dumb, you know. I was uh-huh. like Taco Bell and Subway, so I had no idea, you know. So it was always nice to have Karen and Tim around, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. Okay. We, Johnny so, and I, like, honestly, I can say this. Johnny was, like, my best friend on the show because both of us were kind of, we were kind of, like, in the same boat. Like, even though I had been kind of in the industry already, I was away from my family. I was homesick. So it was like we really didn't have friends. Like we were just kind of like we'd go to work, we'd work a million hours, and then we'd come home. And so then I'd be like, Johnny, you want to go to Target? You want to go to the grocery <laughs> store? Like we just didn't have anything to do. So we became really good friends and hung out all yeah. the time. So you know, he's the, right, world, he like, the story is right. you only um, did oral. Okay, I got that one. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. We won't even start that rumor. He was like a brother to me, and that is the story. So if you two were like brother and sister, who who did you hate? Everybody's got to hate somebody in the cast. Uh, Who did you hate? I don't know. Did you hate anybody? You know, I don't Maybe think I ever really with. hated anyone. I mean, there's occasion. Yeah. I mean, occasionally, you know, I, I didn't get along with everyone. You know, but uh, right. I think uh, more, I, I more didn't get along with some of uh, the guys upstairs. You know, and right. rather, rather than Pat, <laughs> because we were all in the same, but we were all getting screwed. You know, and right. and we knew by who. So that I don't think I think we were united in who we didn't really like. I think. Yeah, we were. I think we were too preoccupied with hating them. We could. We loved each other. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, what? I, going back to your music, like I know a lot of the fans. They have always wanted to know, like, or at least they always ask, like, who are your favorite artists? Who are your favorite bands that have influenced you? Um, uh, that's, that's really a good question, you know, because I, I we get asked that all the time, and I never really have an answer. I mean, I, I, I like all kinds of music, you know, and I like the Beatles, I like Oasis, Foo Fighters, Nirvana. I, I like pretty much everything. But, um, mm-hmm. it, I I mean, I, I grew up more listening to stuff my sister was listening to or my mom or my dad. I never really had my own, like, hey, I'm into this kind of music, you know, because I think in that time where I would have, like, been into music stuff, we were working on the show, you know, and, and for me that I, I was I was a little, I, I would say, I'm going to say, like, much more immature than a normal person. You know, I really didn't listen to any music, you know, um, aside from what my parents would listen to, you know. I, all I did was I, I played soccer, I played sports, and I did martial arts, you know, when I was younger. And, and then, then I was on Power Rangers, you know, and it wasn't until, like, after, like, I had nothing and was like, I'm going to teach myself the guitar. That's when I really started to think about music, but it wasn't like... It wasn't really a band, and I was like, oh, this band, you know, I want to be like them. It wasn't like that. I just kind of, I enjoy all music, really. Um, right. It's just really, just a, you know, the, any song that really has a message or moves me in a way, you know? Right, right. Totally. So what, yeah. when you, you mentioned writing songs, so what kind of things inspire you when you write a song? Because, I mean, it's one thing to play in a band, but it's a whole other thing. You guys are songwriters, all of you, correct? Yeah, yeah, we all. Yeah, um, 
we yeah. all definitely uh, have written and uh, contribute to the songwriting. Um, earlier on, I, I basically did all of it because it, I just did, you know. And um, and uh, but now it's like you know I have, I guess it's all around really. Um, I, I I just I recorded like I mean, a few months ago. I recorded about eleven songs, um, and then I had Polo come in. And just said, all right, make some stuff up. And so we just spent a couple hours, and he came up with all his parts, you know. And then, then uh, I basically uh, just made up Maurice's parts, and then uh, he's going to go through it and, <laughs> and do his own thing. But it's just just for emotion and feeling. I need to put that stuff in there. But but yeah, we all just kind of contribute now. Right. Very cool. Very cool. So I think we should probably take some callers because I know the the phone lines are going ringing off the hook. They're Can we take a caller? Daddy crazy. Um, I know right. we've got our good friend from the UK. I hope this is him, otherwise I'm an asshole. Uh, <laughs> Joe, is that you? Yeah. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Hi. Woo. Hello. Joe, you're on the call with Johnny Hello. Bosch and I shine. <laughs> oh my God, this is amazing. He's got two characters <laughs> <challenges> now. <laughs> Um, first of all, before I ask my question to the lovely Johnny, thank you, Karen, for the autographed picture. I did get it for my birthday. It was wonderful. Thank you. Oh, you are so welcome, my love. Anytime, anytime. <laughs> okay. Johnny, my question for you. I did ask Karen this same question, but I'm going to ask it to you as well. What was your favorite Power Rangers episode that you filmed and why? Uh, favorite episode? Uh, gosh, um, I I don't know the names Fire of them all. Captain. I I you know I, I, uh, uh, there's one called Game of Honor that I had a lot of fun on uh, just because I got to do some flips and kicks and stuff in it. Um, uh, I'm like dreaming of a White Ranger it was kind of fun as well. Um, but that's just because I, I I like Christmas. Um, but, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, the Wild West. Okay, that's it. Wild oh, West. That was the best. Oh, whatever. That, that had to be my favorite, I think. Yes. yes. <laughs> that's my favorite. Oh, my God, that's my favorite, too. <laughs> oh, my. I remember from the episode that you said, Johnny, was, that almost was messed up my boots. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was it was fun, man. I and, and I remember we were looking at the script, and it was like, you know, I was getting in, I was I was more in that, like, it was around then when I was like, I mean, not saying that I didn't care, but, like, I was like, I, let's just have fun. And we all just started mm-hmm. doing accents and stuff, and it, it was just, it was a good time. I enjoyed that. And that was actually the first time and only time that we ever got a letter from Saban saying we did a good job. That's true. <laughs> that we did. I remember yeah. that. Oh, my gosh. I totally forgot. Yeah. He lo- they love that episode. Thank you so much, Joe, for calling us all the way from Thanks, Joe. England. I don't even understand. We Y'all you. weren't even from Angel Grove. How the hell are you going to this boat? <laughs> <laughs> you know that Power Rangers makes no sense. It was cute and cuddly. Stop being so logical. There wasn't nothing cute and cuddly about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chris, let's take another caller. You got um, – Christina, she's got a question for Aisha. Hi, how are you guys? Hi there. Hello. Hi. Hi, my name's Christina, and with me is Karina, my sister. Uh, we have Ooh. a question for all of you, actually. Yeah. Um, would you like to say your question? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> somebody. <laughs> okay. Well, we just wanted to know which song from the latest album um, do you think you like the most or fits your personality <laughs> the most? Okay, that's a good question. That is a good question. Uh, Maurice, you go first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can think about it. <laughs> yeah, I would say, I mean, say for all of us, probably is, has our time run out because, uh, I don't know. Um, Well, that's a great answer. Has our time run up? Okay. Johnny, do you feel like that? That do you feel like that? You know, kind of is the mood of the band right now. Yeah, I think. I mean, yeah. I, I guess when when uh, I came up with the lyrics for it, yeah, it kind of hit home, and I was like, you know, it, it, 
it, it does feel like, I mean, we're getting older and it's like we've been at this for a while and it's, and it's just hard and sometimes you can't help but, but think that, you know, you know, it would be easier to give up, you know, and, and then you wonder if like, man, what's the point, you know? Um, and so that just that, like you have that thought. And so I had to kind of write, uh, with, with that, I guess, in mind. But, um, right. but, I also, but I also wrote uh, Kingdoms Come and Castles Fall because it's like, you know, things come and go, you know, and, and, and there's always still hope, you know. Right. I believe in that. Wow. Okay. So thank you, ladies, for calling in. Double trouble. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. We've got what? Brianna. Yeah. Hello. Oh, Brie, my favorite. My, is this Hello. my favorite, Brie? Hello. My question is um, for those fans, either with music or with Power Rangers, that that have the issue of memorizing, what would you suggest to help them with that process? Good question, Bree. That is a great question. Um, repetition for me. I mean, I have I forget lyrics all the time, so. And I mm-hmm. look at Johnny when I do something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you just you just you just need me to look at you. It was like, dude, what's wrong with you? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. I, I think uh, you know repetition really w- does help in in memorizing you know you know lyrics or anything like that. The more you do it, you know, it, like now it's like we can go through our set list and we don't really think about it as much because we just know what's coming up, you know. And so when you do it enough, you know. Um, you get used to it. And I think you kind of have, it's weird though, because like you'll go through, uh, now this is like as an actor, you don't, if you do too much repetition, it can be become old and boring. So you still have to keep it fresh. Um, but if you do do things over and over, you will, you'll figure things out better, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what always helped me, Bree, is that I would, I have good short-term memory. I don't have good long-term memory. So I kind of like one of those crammers, but I would turn my script into a song. Like I would be like, I'd make it into to a song so I could remember it. So thank you, Bree. We love you. You know, wow. you're our favorite listener. <laughs> one of them. One of our favorite listeners. I don't want to piss off the chat room. They will cut me. <laughs> okay, so who else? I know there's more people because they were, like, hitting me up all day on Facebook wanting okay. to talk we've, to Johnny Bosch. We've got Christy. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, guys. Um, My question Christy is for... Christy Bolton? Yes. Oh, okay. You guys remember me. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're <laughs> one of our U.S. street presidents. Cool, go on, yeah. sir. Wow. <laughs> um, first of all, I want to say you guys rock. I love you guys. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, my question was, how was your experience this year on Give Me the Gig 2, and how did it differ from last year? Uh, well, it was... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was, it was, like, your sound effects are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, well, uh, last year we auditioned, or not auditioned, but we, we, uh, we competed for Give Me the Gig, and we lost. And this year we won, you know. Um, and I think if we're talking about the moment of uh, being there and doing it, it was it was totally awesome. Yeah, great, great experience. Yeah, um, yeah. We got the. I was so I proud of you guys was. that you won. What was that? Uh, thank you. I was so proud of you guys that you won. <laughs> oh, thank you so thank much. You. We're we're so. I, I mean, you have no idea how much how much it means to us to hear everybody really excited that we actually won because it, it just feels like, it feels like, you know, we're all part of a team, you know, and, and it's like we're going out there, but you guys are there always supporting us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, congratulations, first of all. And thank you, Missy, for calling in. We really appreciate your question. Thank you, Thank you, Hey, wait, real quick, is Polo alive? Polo, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Wait, that that There's sounded no like an English speaking guy. <laughs> yeah, that's the English guy. <laughs> what Polo? You alive, I Polo? I think Polo was asleep. <laughs> All right, I think Polo's gone. Well, he, he just, I think he's he out. Not, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he was your That's all right. He's he's probably out looking for his wife. We didn't do yeah, it yeah. fast enough. 
<laughs> Strikes again. Right. You know, damn it, if Katrina would have been on the show tonight, we could have helped him out. All right. Uh, oh, goodness. I know, right? <laughs> so um, do we have anybody else? Do we have another caller? Oh, we have tons. We have uh, oh, Telco. Okay. <laughs> Hello? Telco. Yeah, I'm here. So, hey, Johnny. Yeah. You're on the phone with I Shine and Johnny Bosch. Hey, Johnny. You remember yeah. you remember me from Anime Iowa? You uh gate got my you signed my uh sister's birthday present, the Sailor Moon wallet. Uh-huh. Yeah, I she it. loves it. And she she, well, she that, loves it. I hope so. <laughs> that would think it you're like she hates it. She hates it. She it was it was a unique gift, something that I knew she'd love. And she uh, uses awesome. it every day right now. And second off, uh-huh. I want to say, hey, Maurice, yeah. do you have any memories of Anime Zing 2011? 2011? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Maybe. I can't uh, remember yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. Remember, yeah, was... remember Kick Him in the Shins and that whole bust out laughing in the dealer room? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Gio was there. <laughs> yeah, Gio, Gio was there. Yeah. 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 I remember. Yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Did you have a question, Toku, or was that your question? One, two. I just wanted to thank him. Oh, oh, uh, thank you so much. You rock, man. He's such a sweetie. Right. Thanks, man. He's one of our number ones. He always is a, a he's a, a, a just like a true listener to Unscripted Radio, and I know he's a true iShine listener. So that, thank you, Toku. All right, yeah. we've got um oh wait Michael Char oh wait no oh it jumped um oh shit please hold <laughs> the, you know, difficulties. I miss our divorced person um mm, really Michael you don't. Char yeah I know Lord I really don't. I hope he rots in hell. Exactly. Oh, huh? Michael Charles. Moving on. Are you there? Michael. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi. Hey there. Uh, I have a uh, I have a uh, I have a question for Johnny. Okay. Yeah, what's up? Uh, uh, I've been a big fan since since uh, well since, since I started watching uh, Power Rangers. Well, I, was, well, I don't know how old I was that time. I just forgot. Okay. I tend to forget a lot. <laughs> what's your what's your uh, what's your funniest moment that ever happened during the uh, well, on the show during, during yeah. filming? Uh, during filming yeah. or just in? Okay, um, funniest Sorry, moment. During, uh, well, I well, I'm trying to think of something funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I know something funny that happened that you really laughed like a lot. Like you were on really? the ground okay. crying when what? they were shooting the movie, and somebody tried to run up a tree, and you were supposed to spot them. Oh well, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I was, that's not. I mean, it was a funny well, moment. Well, maybe I was laughing. Maybe I was laughing. You may not have been laughing, but I thought it was hilarious. Well, I want to know who was dumb enough to run up a tree. Now, well, me and Jason were flipping off of a tree. And we were spotting each other, and uh, and yeah, and and he and he wanted to run up like like as he was running, instead of doing like we, he would do three steps and I would just jump off of it, you know. And so uh, I was expecting him to do three steps, but as he was running, he's like, "I'm gonna keep running." I'm like, "What?" And he just kept running. He did like five or six steps, and I couldn't reach him, you know, because I'm smaller than you know a regular white person. And uh, he fell. <laughs> <laughs> It cut his face a little bit, and uh, yeah, it was it was it was kind of funny. But uh, he cut his face a lot of bit to the point where his double had to like stand in for him for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> it was your accident. Oh, uh, first week of filming. First week of filming. <laughs> so, no, do you have something that you remember that was really funny? I, you know, I don't. I mean, I. There were so many different things that happened. Yeah, Uh, yeah, I mean, all I can think about right now is, like, the movie. Uh, 
And uh, when we were driving to set, I don't know, I remember if you were in the van when uh, they were driving us, and then I decided to climb out onto the top of the van. Were you there? I was. <laughs> I was. And that's Harriet. Harriet got yeah. so nervous and so mad at you. Yeah. 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 And then Jason, oh, and then Jason rolled up the window and wouldn't let me back in. Oh. <laughs> he was, he was He's a son of a bitch. Yeah. Dirty. And then he was <laughs> swerving the car. <laughs> Jason, like, if you try to prank him, he tried to prank you harder. So it was like you just had to be like, whatever, dude. <laughs> him and Johnny, love, they were like just constantly just playing around. Thank you so much for calling in. That was a great question, Michael. Thank you. No and problem. Bye. We've got another question for iShine, and it's from Eric. What's up, Eric? What's up, Eric? What's up? Um, my question? question for y'all is... Uh... Hello? Yeah. Hello? Eric? What? Uh, okay. My question is, uh, after uh, you lost your bass player, uh, how long do you actually think it'll be till you find a replacement. Um, I love the music so much, and well, I, I just can't stand uh, you stopping because all your music really hits home with me. No, oh, we're, we're not going to stop. That. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to stop. In fact, we've uh, we've just finished recording instruments for a new album. Um, and uh, Polo, he's not on the line right now, but he's probably home mixing. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're not going to stop, and we do have, uh, uh, well, I guess uh, we have someone yeah, now that's, gonna, that, that's uh, our our main potential of becoming our bassist. Uh, we've had guys filling in for a little bit from a service interruption, but uh, we do have somebody that's uh, potentially going to be our bassist. So uh, it'll be really soon. Yay! See? Good news. Good. Only good Eric. news on Unscripted Radio. Thank you for calling. I was waiting for that kid to ask to be a part of the band. I heard some other blog <laughs> talk show you were on a couple months ago, and I was I there, and they were like, can I be in your band? Can I audition? And you're like, uh, well... <laughs> right. right. I knew I, I was. I thought it was going that way too. So, <laughs> who else do we have? We're gonna uh, try to get in, in as many as possible. We only have a few minutes, so when you call in, guys, please ask your question quick because we've got about three more minutes with them, and they've got to go and finish mixing this album. All right, we've got Omar, Johnny, what's up, Omar? Omar? Hey. Hey, what's up? Um, actually, this is a question for you, Johnny, and uh, Karen. Um, okay. I'm a I'm an actor, and one of my favorite shows growing up, and the reason why I want to become an actor is Power Rangers. And yeah. I know things are a little bit different when it comes to auditioning. That when you guys audition from now, so my question for you guys is, what would be your biggest advice for actually auditioning for Power Rangers? For, for Power Rangers specifically, or just just auditioning? <clears throat> well, both. Okay. okay. You want to you want to say it first, Johnny? Um, I I don't know if I have a good answer. I mean, I I would I would first say that uh, first thank you for uh, I, I'm glad that you enjoyed the show and uh, I, I'm glad that you have a passion to act and uh, I I think the one thing you shouldn't do is is just is a uh, focus only on becoming a Power Ranger, you know, because then you're really limiting yourself uh, as an actor. Wow. Um, and, and when you get on, the, if if you were to get on the show, it's not like you're going to be doing any really deep acting, you know. Uh, it, it is a kid kid's show, and so you're, after a while you're going to feel like, boy, I'm not acting. Um, but mm-hmm. I, I, would just, I would just say don't limit yourself, you know, and, and really just kind of get out there and do as many auditions as you can, you know, like try to yep. just book as many auditions as possible because and it just so that you get used to the auditioning process and people being mean and people rejecting you, you know, right. and, and, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you got to get through all that kind of stuff, you know, and and uh, but it, it just I would just say get out there and just start doing it. Right, and what I would add to that because he's absolutely right is that you got to just go out there and just be confident in who you are. And the reality is is you're going to get more no's than you are going to get yeses. But that day that Johnny and I showed up to the audition, I mean, there were thousands of people at this audition. 
and no one would have ever, I would have never thought it would have been me. And when we did show up for our callback, there were every, I mean, honestly, there was every single race there. So they didn't know what they wanted. But whatever it is that we had when we walked in that room, that is what worked. So always know that, you know, it's, a, it's kind of like Johnny said earlier, if it's meant for you, it's going to happen, you know. And he's, he's been blessed enough to have some amazing opportunities in his career, and he didn't bet on them. But it, it was his destiny, and it, he was ready when that opportunity came. So just be ready for the opportunity. Whatever acting gig it is, go for it all and just be confident. You guys make sure you get paid. Right. <laughs> so I guess we only really have time for one more question because I know these guys have busy, busy schedules. But you know, we have to make um, before we take that last question, yes. we have to make our very quickly our uh, next exciting Power Ranger announcement yes. that kind of have has a tie to Johnny. I know, I know. Okay, so guys, we have a huge announcement on. Tuesday of next week, Miss Nakia Barice is going to be on the show. woo We've got Nakia, and then we may have another surprise next week. We haven't got confirmation, but it's like a Power Ranger a week. What, what can we say? We're delivering. We told you guys, Morphicon is going to be awesome. <laughs> and, and, yeah, we're going to take this last question, but before we even get to it, guys, I'm so proud of all of you. I've known you, Johnny, for I mean, since the first day I remember seeing you at the audition, and you've always been a beautiful and wonderful person, wonderful friend. I'm so happy that your life is going so amazing. And, Maurice, you are my honey bunny. I love you to death, and I wish yeah. you both the big, I know, I wish you both the biggest success. So let's take Thank that you last so question. Much. You're welcome. We've got Miss LaShawna Brooks. Lashana. Hey, hey, guys. Hi, Johnny. Hey. Final question. How's it going? Yeah, I remember Johnny from Otacon back in 2003, so that's why I know that's why um I know him so well. My first question to Johnny, who is your favorite singer that inspires you to sing? Um you know, there there isn't like one singer where that that inspires me to sing or be a singer. Um again, I just kind of sang started singing out of necessity. I didn't even know how to sing uh, when I first started. And I remember when I wrote, like, one of the first songs that I thought was good, and I played it for my, my dad and my sister when they were visiting, I could see their smiles fading, you know, and I could tell that it wasn't good. Um, oh, my and, goodness. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so the, I mean, I just I like all kinds of music. I really do. And uh, I just like anybody who, who kind of who can sing and you can just feel their passion. You can, you can just connect with uh, whatever they're singing about. You, you just know it, you know. So uh, no one in, in particular, just uh, in general, just like anyone who's got, you know, passion behind the music. Yeah, like Justin oh, Bieber. Yeah. yeah, like Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> baby, baby, baby. Oh! <laughs> I'm going to be the next hit single. I can just feel, I can feel the passion behind those blue right. eyes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. On that, note, on that note, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being on Thank Unscripted you. Radio. Where can they find you? Where can they buy your album? Tell them. Oh, yes. You can get our stuff on iTunes or Amazon or Rhapsody or, or at iShine.net. Um, you can check out our uh, documentary series about us and all the baloney that we go through um, <laughs> the link is YouTube. up in the chat room for iShine.net <laughs> yeah. thank you Melanie Yeah, and youtube.com yeah. slash the iShine band and then we're on Facebook as well iShine Music so please check us out and uh, we'll be around yeah and if you you know I've got people texting me saying they'll be your basis so if, if it falls through Daniel Cooney wants to throw his name out in the hat shout out to him <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys All right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you, thank you for listening And take a little time to enjoy the radio Or at least be offended by it Good night, everybody Good Thank you to all night. the callers that called There were so many Johnny and the High Shine fan are so popular We have to get, get you get to get all of Johnny. Yeah, sorry guys We'll get him back on, we promise I know this cleaning room has been good week. Good night No, poor James I, we're paying them like Saban paid you all. <laughs> right? I know. It's awesome. James, we love you, baby. Quarter. We love you, James. Quarters. We got a pack of quarters for you, James. Yeah, James, how many quarters oh are you? Oh, my God. Ooh. 
Oh, we gotta answer that question. Cobra <laughs> did. He said seven. Cobra, Cobra answered it. I'm not answering that question. My manhood is seven. Oh my god, Kat's gonna be mad. Ever? We didn't ask him how she can get a ranger. Oh, next time I'll t- I'll tweet him. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs>